What's up everyone, welcome back to another 20th anniversary LEGO Star Wars review here on the Revlog channel. My name is Spencer, and today we have the Imperial Dropship. This thing is a remake of a battle pack, so it's kind of trying to be a battle pack, but then it's also part of this promotional line. So it's in this weird sort of purgatory where it's $20, but it only has 125 pieces, which is the amount that a battle pack has. And it has these four figures that are great battle pack figures. Great for building up big collections, of, you know, neutral, characterless figures that you can use in your mocks, in your armies, or whatever. Um, but then it has this promotional Han Solo that makes it a $20 set. 125 pieces for $20 is awful. Um, so this Han Solo kind of single-handedly destroys this as a battle pack. If this was just a regular battle pack, regardless of this promotional thing, uh, the 20th anniversary thing, this would be super cool. But instead, if you wanted to use this to get a bunch of, you know, dark blue pieces and cool figures, you're going to end up with a bunch of these uh, Han Solos that if you're paying MSRP for, like, a battle pack and for this set, you're kind of paying, like, six bucks for this Han Solo figure. Uh, and... I'm not sure if you're going to be able to sell this Han Solo figure for six bucks to make this even like a full price battle pack. Through our Rebel Lug rating scale, which had, uh, as of recording this, 16 different votes where Rebel Lug members voted and rated the set from 1 to 10, this had a 6.69, which is overall positive, but not the highest end of the scale like some of the other sets in the line were able to get, probably because of two reasons. The Stormtrooper helmets, which are pretty controversial, and the price. Kevin, or Brick Ninja, going on to say, the vehicle is a nice redesign of the original set, but not a set that needed to be redone in my opinion. I dislike the new Stormtrooper helmets, so their inclusion makes this set pointless for me. However, if you like the new helmet design, it's a great set. Noah, or H2 Bricks, says, Nostalgia comes to mind when seeing this. The classic version of the set was so iconic, and many loved it, which of course makes sense to bring back now. Price point for this, though, is definitely just right for this. But some members feeling quite different. Dayton uh, from Rebel Lug. A good build with a nice selection of figs. However, the price to piece ratio is hopelessly inflated. Lego will increasingly lose its fan base. So I hope that the following review can help you sort of gauge your own opinion on the set. And hopefully I don't influence it too much. But yeah, enjoy. All right, I think this is going to be a pretty quick review. This is everything you actually get in the package. You get the dropship, which fits all four minifigures, and the anniversary Han Solo. So I think this, this was kind of a weird choice uh, to do for one of the five anniversary sets. Uh, to redo, first of all, a battle pack, uh, but then second of all, this battle pack. Um, it was a cool battle pack because it came, you know, with three plain stormtroopers, uh, which makes this set kind of cool also, except this isn't really a battle pack because, you know, it costs, like six dollars more than a battle pack which is already expensive for a battle pack and then it comes with like a han solo so you can't like you know get a bunch of duplicate it doesn't make a lot of sense to get a bunch of duplicate minifigures in this case and then in addition this is like not a real vehicle in star wars as far as i'm aware i'm pretty sure lego just like completely made it up and even if it is real uh it has zero seconds of screen time anywhere uh so that's definitely kind of strange in my opinion that they would choose to do that but as for what it's trying to be, it's trying to be the, the the old Battle Pack dropship. It does a really good job of that. It's a perfect redesign, in my opinion, for being a Lego set and stuff like that. Uh, these, these flaps right here made of these hexagon pieces. These are really cool, in my opinion. And then you end up uh, actually getting an Imperial symbol printed on a dark gray sticker. So you can kind of stick that sticker wherever you want. If you have a dark gray ship or a dark gray wall, you can just stick it on there and it'll look really super clean. Uh, the same for the dark blue one right here on the top of the ship. I think that's pretty cool to get. This windshield on the front is also really cool. I really like this angular design for the, for the windshield piece. I can't wait to use that in like some sort of starfighter mock or something. The cockpit has this stickered control panel right there that looks pretty simple but uh, has some dark blue on it so it matches the rest pretty well uh, and does the job i'm not sure if it actually exists anywhere else but you know it serves this purpose great it's a it doesn't look too cheesy or anything like some control panels used to i think my favorite part is like the main feature of the set uh as a child i think i would have found this so cool where since this is a drop ship uh, it can actually um, lift up this part which, you know, comes up really seamlessly on that, you know, just nice hinge. And then uh, a Technic 
axle can just slide off of this thing that carries three stormtroopers and then it can just, you know, fly away. So I'm totally into that design here. You can take a look at the little dropship thing that we get, or the, the thing that's actually being dropped. It just has these dark blade platforms that the stormtroopers sit on, uh, and a handle that goes along the top. Those are um, flat silver grills there, which I suppose is kind of cool to see. Um, I'm happy to see so much dark blue in this set because I think dark blue is a really cool, cool color. Um, and again, here are those uh, imperial symbols that are on the dark gray stickers on the side there. So in my opinion, for what it's trying to be, I think it does a good job. But again, it's just like a weird choice of a set. And seeing as it's trying to recreate a battle pack at the $20 price point, it is definitely not a battle pack. From the Rebelug critics, this set received a 6.69 score, which is, you know, overall positive. But it definitely had mixed reviews, where a lot of people were sort of mixed on the choice, but they agreed that it had a really good nostalgia factor for LEGO builders out there who remember remember the battle pack. Uh, the thing that they were probably most excited for was the, th the three plane stormtroopers, which we can get into now. All the plain white stormtroopers are identical, even down to their heads, so I'm not gonna bother uh, going over all three of those. But yeah, you get the three plain white stormtroopers, which have this uh, controversial, to say the least, new head design. I'm not really sure where the market sways on this head design. I'm personally somewhere in between. I think they were really close to like the perfect, the perfect design because I'm really liking the shape of the eyes and then they actually did uh, a dual mold here. So if you look at the inside of the helmet, it's all black inside. It's all black plastic, which isn't something you would have seen before because they would just do black printing, you know, for the eyes and stuff like that after they did the mold. So that's a really good look um, for the eyes, especially in person. But I think the eyes might be a tiny bit too big. And then the front of the helmet just droops down so much. So if they did just changed their technique and then made it slightly more like the old ones, I think this would have been the perfect Stormtrooper design, in my opinion. But instead, we're, we're kind of... We're kind of stuck with this, which, I don't know, overall, I, I don't hate. I would use it in a mock, uh, but then again, I'm not too picky about minifigures and stuff like that. The body's not new, the legs are not new, and you still have that stupid printing thing where it doesn't go below that, like, shin mark, uh, which is kind of lame, but, I don't know, we're kind of forced to live with it. And that's what the back looks like. Better than the original Stormtroopers, I guess, that would have come in the set that this is trying to recreate. I think a cool effect of the dual mold is that it looks like, from the, from certain angles, it kind of gives the effect like the Stormtrooper, you know, has like a black suit underneath the armor, which would be true to the movie, um, instead of them having to use black heads like normal to do that. So they can leave the flesh head there and it's not totally visible most of the time. Also, I think this was a cool choice to put the dark gray marks with the black outlines here on the back of the helmet. That's not something we've always had. If I had one thing to say, I wish that they would take the opportunity uh, in these battle packs and stuff like this where you get these uh, characterless minifigures that don't really matter, you know who they are, to give LEGO fans a wider variety of heads because all these stormtroopers have identical heads and they're the same as like the clones and all the other stormtroopers for the last like many years. Uh, so that's, I think, kind of lame that we just end up with so many of the same head. But I, I guess I understand why they do it to like cut the price for, you know, stuff like battle packs. This figure, I think, is sick. This black stormtrooper. The undermold in the helmet, which would, you know, make up the eyes right there, is almost like a really dark gunmetal. It's super subtle, uh, but it worked out so well. And then the rest of the the rest of the printing is that same sort of silvery gunmetal print. This is a really cool figure uh, that they that they would include here, which is of course the same as as the uh, as the set this is trying to create. It came with a similar shadow stormtrooper. Unfortunately, just like the plain white stormtroopers, this comes with like the hair dryer blaster. And I'm sure Lego's done its market research, and they know that this is what the majority of buyers, you know, being kids, want. I guess, um, but. It's still kind of boring compared to the regular blasters, and I guarantee you they cost more to produce. Uh, so that kind of sucks. And then I straight up almost forgot. Uh, we have the Han Solo promotional minifigure as part of the 20 years anniversary Lego Star Wars line. So this is the classic Han Solo with like the yellow head and you know this really like plain torso and these classic legs and the classic blaster. 
This is the same kind of cool as all the other classic minifigures that we get. Of course, it has the 20 Years Lego Star Wars print on the back and this 4x4 modified tile. So as a final verdict for me at MSRP, this has a pretty bad value in my opinion. Basically because this Han Solo figure inflates the price of a battle pack so much that in my opinion it kind of becomes not worth it. If you're just buying one because you want a handful of stormtroopers for your market, it might be a good idea. Or if you're able to get it on sale, I don't know if these are you know, ever going to go on good sales or whatever because these sets are just coming out, so there's not, not really a lot saying, so there's not really a way to say. Then of course it would be a good deal, like I don't know, all LEGO sets are when they go on sale. But yeah, I'm definitely kind of stuck because I'm glad they decided to remake a cool battle pack. But um, because of the gimmick of this entire line, which is that they have these, these classic minifigures in it, it just becomes sort of too expensive to use practically as a battle pack. As for a playset, that's just a good, you know, cheap, lower tier price Lego set, because of course Lego sets get quite expensive, so having the lower price ones is good. This is at least a good lower price set. It doesn't have any, you know, tremendous flaws. It's just not the best value. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'm Spencer from the channel Lego Spencer, and subscribe to the Reblog channel that you're watching right now for many more videos coming out soon that aren't just reviews.